Welcome everyone to our office hours. This is where you get to ask us questions and we'll answer those to the best of our ability. Also, it's just a fun way to get to know each other a little bit better. How's your Friday, Yuri? My Friday has been good so far. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Oh, a couple of announcements I thought we could make. Um, several people in the Discord have been asking about a guide for our chat GPT integration. That's still a work in progress, but we do have a blog post that's kind of a, an overview of what we did to implement that. So you can check that out at edgedb.com slash guide, sorry, edgedb.com slash blog, if you're interested in reading that. And uh, I guess cloud beta is still going on. So if you wanna be a part of that, you can reach out to us here in the Discord on the cloud channel, or you can sign up at our website at edgedb.com. There's a big button at the top of the page on the navigation bar. Any announcements you want to share before we dive into questions? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Uh, working hard on HDB 4.0, working hard on cloud. Nice, nice. All right. If anyone has questions, feel free to go ahead and either post those in the chat, or if you want to come up on the stage, raise your hand, and I will bring you up on the stage to answer some questions, or to ask your question, rather. We also have... Uh, Scott in the audience today, he's going to be sharing any links that we mention as we're, as we're doing this. So we appreciate that, Scott. All right. Uh, not a question, but a feature request. Would love for this to be part of EdgeDB CLI to add extensions. Trunk, a package manager for Postgres extensions. Is this something that you're, that, that's uh, on your radar, Yuri? Is this something you're aware of? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do want to have extensions to to HTTP. We already have uh, um, PG Vector. Already have a few uh, sort of built in. Yes, PG Vector is one of them. The other one is GraphQL, uh, and uh, there is another one coming. Um, probably too early to announce it, but it will be part of HTTP four point zero. Um, Ideally, we do want to have a proper uh, extension uh, interface or uh, API. We don't want to bundle them with HTTP. So uh, it's still an open question how exactly that API will um, will look like. With what will it be built? Maybe it will be built with uh, WebAssembly in mind, for example, so that you can add your numerical library and access it from HQL or something. That would be cool, uh, but uh, it still requires a lot of work. So for now, we are sort of bundling extensions with HTTP, kind of similar to what Postgres was doing initially with the contrib and like blessed extensions that it was shipped with. But the long-term game here is to have a marketplace for uh, extensions. And the extensions for HTTP uh, will not only be limited to things like uh, uh, PostJS or PG vector that add new types to the database, um, but also uh, to lighter extensions, uh, as in, uh, I think this uh, nano ID function written in HQL can be useful for people. So, I, uh, 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 so I'll, I'll put it in, uh, as an extension, I'll add it to the marketplace, and then people can install it. Or... Um, for example, this uh, the schema I use it in all uh, of my project. It, it 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 has a bunch of abstract types that repeatedly prove to be handy. So again, I will just uh, uh, post it as an extension. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it can be about uh, uh, building contact forms correctly with all the details about handling addresses and uh, in different countries and whatnot. So potentially can be an elaborate schema and it can be a reusable schema. HDB is quite unique. Uh, it's quite a unique database because it allows for this easy schema reuse. So uh, yeah, the plan is to um, to implement all of this, uh, but it might take some time uh, for us to do it. So I, I'm, I'm not ready to give any promises when exactly the, the marketplace will happen, when exactly we'll be able to uh, give you the power to install different extensions, uh, but it it is on our roadmap. Like it, it is something that we are thinking about pretty much every week now uh, on a weekly basis. So uh, yeah, hopefully some of it might might happen sooner than later. Um, uh, but uh, one thing for certain is that more built-in extensions are coming to HTTP soon. 
All right. Uh, let's see. I currently have an app that is local first. Everything is persisted to SQLite in the desktop app. Then I use EdgeDB as my global server database. I wonder, is it possible to convert EdgeQL queries to SQL, or will that not work because EdgeDB tables will be massively different than what I would have in SQLite, even if I try to model the same schema as close as possible to EdgeDB? In general, would love to hear your thoughts about local-first architectures, especially with local stores that use SQL still. Can EdgeDB help with delta syncing in any way too, perhaps? Is so, um, this is also one of those things that we are, that we sort of have on our radar, um, but it's unclear exactly how, how to solve this problem. And it's unclear how, 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 how many resources can we uh, delegate to solving this problem. So uh, off the top of my head, a couple of things. Um, one is uh, exciting and one is not exciting. I'll start with the not exciting one. Uh, I don't think it's possible to do what you're asking by compiling HQL queries to SQL so that you can run them in the other database. We are fairly dependent on Postgres. We are using a lot of Postgres capabilities that other databases lack, or uh, they might implement them in a different way, essentially. So, uh, for example, we use uh, arrays extensively, Postgres arrays. Uh, they're impl they're, they are like an extension, essentially, they, uh, to SQL. Uh, they are not implemented in, the, in MySQL, as far as I know, or maybe they are now, but wasn't the case uh, a few years ago, uh, definitely. Uh, not sure what the support for uh, for them in in in, in SQL light, but it's just an illustration of the idea that uh, we use a lot of like Postgres dependent specifics, and uh, for us to make a compiler that works, or uh, better say, adopt our compiler, uh, adapt our compiler to to, to work with uh, SQL light, uh, it would be a huge amount of work that would uh, distract us from implementing other. Uh, useful stuff. And now to the exciting uh, thing. Uh, the exciting thing is that we are um, uh, making this big effort to formalize HQL and the data model. So we are actually working on a, a proper mathematical paper explaining the data model and explaining the uh, the HQL to show that HQL is not um, uh, is not a simple quick solution. Um, uh, based on like couple of uh, couple of edge cases, that it's a proper complete uh, SQL replacement. A side effect of that work uh, required to write an abstract interpreter for HQL, uh, uh, and uh, um, now we are actually experimenting with letting that uh, uh, that interpreter work with. Um, uh, with backends like DuckDB and SQLite. So this is all like super early and super cutting edge. I'm not sure if this is going to be like an officially supported thing, uh, but potentially in the very near future, we'll announce this uh, this work and uh, we might have the SQLite and DuckDB backends uh, sort of uh, being part of it. And again, uh, just uh, do not ever promise here, there are going to be... Uh, 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 there are not going to be polished pieces of software that are made to demonstrate that HQL uh, is more than just HDB itself. That can it, it can actually be implemented in multiple different databases. But I think if this work uh, uh, is done, if we publish this, and if the quality of this thing is good enough, then potentially uh, users like you will be able to um, um, to build on top of it uh, and uh, use SQLite with HQL. Maybe it will not be. Uh, uh, it will not give you 100% uh, of things that HQL uh, with HDB gives you, uh, but it might be a very good approxim approximation of it, still usable. All right, looks like we may have some more questions on the way. What's the, what's the uh, upcoming 4.0 feature that you're most excited to see live while we're waiting on questions to come in? Um, so we promised to ship uh, full text search in 3.0 uh, and last minute we decided that it needs more work. Uh, so that is happening for sure. Uh, I shouldn't say for sure, but uh, we, we, we are 
we have a design that we think uh, that we think works, and we're basically working on it now uh, on implementing it. Most likely, uh, full text search will be part of 4.0, which is actually exciting. It's 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 a good feature. It's a nice API. I'm happy to see it. Um, we we are going to be doing like a lot of different refactorings and HDB code ba uh, code base. The main goal uh, of uh, 4.0 releases isn't going to be features. It's going to be improving the stability, performance, and doing some long overdue refactorings uh, of the infrastructure to make sure that HDB can move forward. Like one of them, for example, is refactoring of the config system that we have. Uh, uh, we actually want future extensions to be able to uh, declare their own config variables. Uh, and uh, to make that work, uh, we need to do um, a few relatively invasive refactorings on the HTTP side. And this is just like one, one of the examples. We also want to do uh, a, a kind of a deep pass on uh, optimizing HDB, on profiling HDB, and looking how can we improve the compiler performance, and looking how we can improve runtime performance. And many other things. Uh, so yeah, HDB 4.0 isn't going to be so much about features. HDB 4.0 is mostly going to be about us actually giving you cloud, working cloud, and uh, doing uh, whatever fixes and improvements in HDB core that are necessary uh, to make sure that that cloud works for you and works great. That is like one of the best clouds out there. So yeah, the feature set of HDB 4.0 isn't isn't going to match uh, HDB 3.0 for sure. But I'm pretty sure that we're going to deliver still uh, a couple of exciting features. Full text search is one of them, and a few others that I have in mind. I I, I don't think I'm I, I'm ready to share them simply because uh, it's too early, and I don't want to overpromise. Yeah. Uh, on the subject of cloud, how is how is the feedback shaping up so far? What have what have you noticed from people who are beta testing? Uh, the cloud. Yeah. Uh. We noticed a bunch of bugs, yeah. <laughs> which is uh, nice and ex uh, and unexpected. And, and, and uh, uh, we are really thankful that the community tests uh, uh, tests the cloud and points it out. Uh, the uh, other than that, even people who uh, reported bugs still uh, shared a bunch of positive feedback, like uh, the UI is great or uh, everything is easy. It feels great that the integration feels right between the CLI and the cloud. Uh, and this is precisely what we were uh, aiming at. So, so far, the feedback uh, pretty much was overwhelmingly positive. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I, to, to the point that I'm a little bit afraid that we're, we're not hearing the negative feedback. So if you have negative feedback, please share it uh, with us. We would really appreciate it. Uh, but so far, mostly positive feedback, which makes me very uh, optimistic um, uh, about the cloud. And I see a question about the timeline for production-ready cloud. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, without uh, uh, trying to uh, trying to not over to over promise here internally, we want to launch paid tiers early. Uh, we want to launch them sometime in uh, end of summer, maybe beginning of uh, September. Uh, we want to have first paid tiers. They might not be announced at that time. They might they might be sort of offered to the early adopters of HTTP, uh, but they will be uh, they will be a much better experience than the free tier that we currently have. So you will have more uh, dedicated resources. You will have things like um, uh, like backups and whatnot, uh, which which are important, more predictable performance. Uh, the general sort of general availability cloud launch uh, will likely happen slightly after that uh, because we need to figure out the free tier. We we want to have a free tier for HTTP, but we also want it to be economical for us. Uh, that 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 means that the HTTP free tier has to be implemented efficiently, cost efficiently for us. Uh, because I mean, it's no secret that uh, for uh, uh, for any cloud database. The majority of, of database instances are free tier ones, and uh, they're not uh, being used uh, all the time. So uh, we have to make sure that uh, we are not just uh, wasting resources and hosting free tier instances that are not being used. So uh, some work uh, has to happen there. We have a plan uh, uh, what to do and how to do it, and uh, hopefully um, End of October, uh, it will be done, but uh, also it might take us slightly longer uh, to implement the free tier. But again, uh, we want to launch the paid tier 
ASAP, essentially. Hopefully, in the next couple of months, it's going to be ready. Or even cool. earlier than that. So stay tuned. We're going to be announcing that on, 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 on Discord. If you are in this and you have any questions about cloud, feel free to address those too, and we'll try to, we'll try to help out, or if you have any feedback about it. Here is another question. I'm new to EdgeDB. Ask AI under documentation gives the wrong syntax most of the time. Any plan to improve the AI conversation? Uh, Ravi, quick question to you. Uh, wrong syntax for which language? For what language? Yeah, is it for, wrong? Let's say HQL JavaScript or, or HQL. HQL. Okay. Uh, Devon, I think we need to have, first of all, I think we need to inspect uh, uh, the, the voting yeah. uh, data that we, that we collected. Let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at it. Uh, if, you, if you can touch base with uh, Diana, mm -hmm. let's uh, extract that data and move it to, I don't know, like a Google spreadsheet and take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, now to your question, uh, Ravi, um, uh, Ask AI is, uh, is imperfect and uh, uh, I feel that uh, there is limited uh, amount of um, um, adjustments that we can really do, right? I mean, uh, we already run it on ChatGPT4, which is pretty expensive, but uh, the whole idea was that we care about the results quality, so we are fine with paying more, 10x more, than uh, for paying chat for, uh, for paying for ChatGPT 3.5. But ChatGPT4 is still is still not perfect. It's uh, it's like junior developer at best, and uh, the worst thing is that it's junior developer that just glanced through the documentation quickly. Like it's not uh, uh, it's not uh, you you cannot compare it to um, to uh, uh, to a human uh, who uh, had some experience building real world applications with HDB and deploying them, and as an expert. Uh, at least it's it's not at that point yet. So we have very limited sort of like leeway on how we can improve the results. We can tweak the prompt. We can tweak the uh, average size of the embeddings that we submit to ChatGPT for. Uh, but ultimately, I think uh, we just need to wait. Uh, SKI is uh, an aspirational tool. Uh, it's not something that will deliver high quality results. Uh, it's something that that you should use essentially as an exploration for, uh, hey, I have this question. I'm not sure how to even formulate it. Like I'll chat with ChatGPT4, uh, uh, in, I'll, I'll chat with SKI or whatever uh, on HDB documentation just so that I have an idea where to look for essentially. And uh, yeah, I think this is where it is going to be at uh, for some time. The good news is that the industry moves so fast. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, OpenAI releases uh, ChatGPT 4.5. Uh, soon trained on like uh, latest revision of HDB documentation with like large token window and then the results can drastically improve. Uh, and this can happen anytime. The, 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 this, this thing moves uh, incredibly fast. So uh, on our end, we will review the uh, feedback data that we receive uh, from, uh, uh, from the UI. And... Uh, We'll see if we can adjust the prompt or if we can improve it, but I, I'm afraid it's going to be only a marginal uh, improvement uh, to it. It's impossible to fix it. And maybe we should be more clear about the this in the UI, Devon. Maybe we should brainstorm the way how uh, how we present this. Uh, maybe there should be a disclaimer uh, in a bigger font that, hey, use this as an exploration tool, uh, not as something that don't expect it to give you a perfect snippet to just copy and paste in your application and just expect it to work. Yeah. Unfortunately. Definitely. Uh, Ravi also. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we've, uh, so, sorry, Devon. I, I mean, I also looked at the other LLMs uh, like Llama 2 and, uh, and, and whatnot. And even exp I think Scott and I separately experimented a little bit with Anthropic uh, Claude AI. Uh, and it's it's roughly all like in the same ballpark. Uh, it's it's just not perfect. It's just not there yet. It's amazing where it is actually uh, when you think about it. Uh, it's amazing what it already can do, uh, but it's far from perfect. Yeah, yeah. I I like to think about approaching its answers like you would approach an answer on Stack Overflow. Um, like Stack maybe... Overflow answers can be can be actually pretty precise and and immediately actionable. Yeah, ask AI answers are not that. Sure, but you have to approach both with a degree of skepticism. Like you have to, 
the, from, you have to kind of bring uh, you have to bring something to it and you know maybe try it out hopefully it works but maybe it won't and and if it doesn't maybe even then it would point you in the right direction yeah. but in case you haven't noticed ravi there is a uh, feedback mechanism on those answers so if you get one of those answers where the edge ql is bad scroll down and downvote that answer and that will flag it for us and and we monitor those things and there are also opportunities sometimes for us to improve our documentation and that could improve the the answers too and those feed into that effort all right yeah got i think those. i yeah. think i think Ultimately, what will improve it is is, is when uh, ChatGPT reindexes our documentation. A lot has happened uh, after the cutoff date, the current training cutoff date. So I think if uh, ChatGPT is retrained uh, on uh, the latest version of the docs, the 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 output will improve considerably. Considerably. Sure, that makes sense. But uh, we should also promote Discord uh, yeah. because on our Discord you can actually get higher quality answers. Yes. Yeah, Discord. Discord is a good place if Chat GPT is failing you for a particular question. All right, here is another question. Our team is comparing graph databases to adopt, and they're currently in testing and benchmarking phase. The goal is to store 100 million plus combined nodes or edges. Um, have we tested against large data sets and could EdgeDB scale linearly with database size over time? Uh, uh, Alexis, it, it, it really depends on, uh, on the schema, actually. So uh, to answer your question, I need to ask a follow-up question, which is, what is the schema? Because the classical uh, use case, uh, HDB is not a classical graph database. Let's start with that. Uh, if you want to have, if you want to store some poorly uh, typed and poorly annotated data in HDB, and uh, you want to run algorithms uh, like search or finding the shortest distance on this data, then use Neo4j. Like this is literally the use case. That said, uh, a lot of uh, uh, people try to use uh, Neo4j to store regular relational data in it. And this is where HDB with it, with its basically like a graph-like extension on top of the classical relational model actually shines. And uh, for, uh, uh, for any relational database, it's no problem to, to store like 100 million records. Uh, it's easy and, uh, and uh, you can store way more than that as well. So uh, HDB should work with that. We, we, we know that some users have big data sets uh, stored in HDB. And, uh, and uh, are totally fine with it. But again, a lot depends on the actual use case. A lot depends on the actual schema and what you, and, and what you try to get, uh, to get out of it. Uh, for the majority use cases, when it's really an application data and when you can have a rich, strictly defined schema, HDB will probably be a better choice than Neo4j. Um, yeah, Alexis, quick follow-up. From someone here, J. Victor V says, "Chat GPT hallucinates a lot, and it's kind of hard to tweak it." That is what we've found in our experience. And there is a section of the blog post that addresses that. If you want to see how we are trying to to mitigate some of that, check out the blog post. Yeah, I see Carson uh, shared in chat that uh, it's literally them they're migrating from Neo4j, and their data is relational. Uh, Carson, what's the size of your data set and uh, how do you find HDB uh, um, uh, working for you so far? Uh, if you can share it in chat and uh, we can continue or if, if you want to um, uh, step on the stage, we can, we can promote you and you can chat with us. Uh, sure. Entirely up to you. Definitely. Um, let's see. On the topic of AI, having a history of questions asked can be a useful feature but re would require auth on the docs page. I, I see Scott's replied to you there to say we're working on this, and I believe it won't require any sort of auth to keep that history. Is that right, Yuri? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, all of the data is going to be stored in your local storage or IndexedDB. I'm not sure how it's, uh, how it's implemented, but it's, 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 it's local first. Uh, yeah. Unless you submit uh, a vote or something like that, we will never know uh, about it. We are, we are not logging anything until you vote, essentially. 
uh, but even if you vote it's uh, even if you do vote uh, it's uh, uh, we are not storing any uh, uh, any data that can sort of identify you yeah I, I, I don't think that we are even logging IP addresses like literally nothing we, we do nothing to fingerprint that data so yeah. it's completely anonymized it's the vote uh, and the question and the vote answer. and the question and that's yeah. it yeah uh, but your history ultimately if you're not voting it just stays with you and o only open ai will know about it uh, uh because we we don't store any logs would it be possible to use a full edgeql query language if one was to implement edgedb on top of sqlite or does the query language rely too heavily on some Postgres features. I'm very interested in having EdgeQL work on top of SQLite. Yeah, I mean, theoretically the answer is yes. Practically, the right now answer is no. So EdgeQL is, EdgeQL and the standard library and the data model and everything else is, um, is, uh, is very wide. It supports a lot. Like, look at our data model, for example. Like, even the basic one, even the scalar one. We support tuples. We support arrays. And you can nest them arbitrarily. And you can pass them from, from the client uh, uh, to the server, for example, through our protocol. And you cannot even do that in Postgres. That's, that's an interesting thing. Uh, there is, like, a notion of a tuple in PostgreSQL, but it's not something that you can use as elegantly and as simply as an edge scale, an edge scale, it's uh, you don't you don't you don't you don't even think about it. You just use a tuple, just like you would use it in Python. So there is a lot of a lot of machinery uh, on the on the pretty complex one on the backend that makes the seamless experience work. And uh, to make it work, there is some deep integration of 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 of, of HDB compiler with the specific flavor and the specific capabilities of PostgreSQL. Uh, we uh, we we don't want uh, we still build HDB with this philosophy that it's general purpose database. We still build it with a philosophy that it's mostly like ninety nine point nine percent abstracted away from Postgres. So in the future, HDB can potentially create its own backend, or in the future, it might potentially run on SQLite. What I'm trying to say here is that it's going to be a very non trivial. Entirely unpredictable uh, investment of resources for us to make it really work on edge on, on, on something like SQLite, like completely and fully. Making a subset of HQL uh, run on SQLite is less hard, but then uh, it uh, it begs the question: like, should it be an official thing that HDB ships? Because it's going to be us essentially fracturing our own ecosystem. Because now you have HQL one flavor of HQL that runs with a standard distribution of HDB, and then you have a slightly different flavor of HQL within the same ecosystem that runs on a different distribution of HDB that is backed by SQLite. It's just not a good thing to, to do, because then uh, you're going to be even more confused than ChatGPT about HQL. Uh, so, uh, so it's unlikely that we're going to be doing this anytime soon. Eventually, potentially, yes, there is, we, we haven't burned any bridges to do that. Uh, moreover, it's sort of a plan to do that in the future, but we can't do it any. We, we, we can't do it now. The best thing that the the the, uh, the highest probability thing that 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 uh, will happen in the near future is that uh, we're going to release the scientific paper about HDB. We're going to release this uh, HQL interpreter uh, thing built with this formal model, and uh, this interpreter would work. With something like DuckDB or SQLite, uh, giving you uh, uh, giving you a subset of HQL. So potentially this can happen. It's not going to be the most performant thing. It's going to be built mostly for demonstration purposes. But uh, I mean, we won't stop people from from using it that they want uh, in their applications. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we're still working on, uh, on it. We don't have like any concrete. Uh, time on when we're going to be publishing this work, uh, how exactly it will look, it's, it's still an open question. Uh, I think the deadline is for publishing the paper is November. So hopefully by November we will know the answer, how far it goes. Carson followed up to say they're not sure on the actual size, probably in the thousands per type, 
they're still early in the migration, but they're excited about what they're seeing so far. Links feel more natural awesome. than foreign keys and joins. Yeah, that's great to hear, Carson. Um, here's an interesting question. How serverless friendly is EdgeDB compared to raw Postgres? Raw PG typically suffers from use cases like uh, AWS Lambdas without care careful connection pooling and management. So uh, in, uh, in that regard, HDB is better uh, because HDB is built on an, an asynchronous uh, um, uh, IO, uh, uh, network IO uh, code. So basically, uh, it, it has a connection pooler built in. So uh, unlike uh, the classical raw PostgreSQL where you have to put a balancer in front of it, um, uh, a connection balancer. You don't need you don't need that with HDB. Um, so uh, and, and and moreover, HDB out of the box uh, provides you mechanisms to uh, 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 to access it uh, from edge uh, edge workers, from Cloudflare edge workers, or Vercel edge workers, or pretty much anything. Our protocol, our network protocol, is engineered in such a way that you can either connect to it using like your low level socket IO, uh, your bi binary driver from Python or um, any other language. This is the classical way how you connect to a database, say Postgres, MySQL, or HTTP. On the other hand, you can connect to the same address with an HTTP client uh, and, uh, and uh, just uh, access our REST-like API you send us HQL and we give you JSON back. But you could what 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 you can also use uh, say uh, the JavaScript client uh, and tunnel it through the HTTP. So you don't need to have any low level uh, network I/O uh, available in your edge function. So you can just you, you can just proxy the whole communication with the database through HTTP. And this is pretty pretty unique feature of HTTP. So uh, basically, the answer is that. We do automatic connection pooling, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and second is that our client uh, libraries infrastructure and the network protocol are optimized specifically for the uh, edge uh, use case. Uh, th there are some kind of deeper answers, uh, potentially to deeper questions about the serverless architecture and the cloud serverless architecture and everything else. But this is the, the the base level sort of like use case answer. Can I access efficiently HTTP from an edge function or a lambda function? The answer is yes, you can, and you don't need to jump through the hoops to do it. It's built in. Quick reminder that uh, the text questions are great. Also, if you want to raise your hand, we can bring you up on stage. If you'd rather talk to us and ask your questions that way, we can talk to you in real time. Um, otherwise, we'll keep going with the text questions. As EdgeDB is written in C Python, that means there are no problems with GC pauses. So uh, EdgeDB is uh, written in many languages, uh, and uh, it's also important to know that um, EdgeDB is uh, is not entirely. Uh, uh, sort of like self-contained thing. It, it 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 runs on top of Postgres. Ultimately, Postgres Postgres is the engine. Postgres is doing the uh, the a lot of the heavy lifting. So uh, what HDB is? It's essentially uh, a thing that fully envelops Postgres. Postgres is where the data is stored. Postgres is where the execution of your query is happening, and HDB is responsible for routing the requests for handling whatever state that is for implementing the protocol and most importantly uh, it acts as a as a compiler you can think of hdb of like llvm like it compiles your high level data model to low level sql model it compiles your high level query language hkl to low level uh, language like sql and it tries to do that as efficiently and as proper as possible so uh, the with with this architecture, there are two uh, distinct uh, places where a GC pause can potentially occur. 
uh, number, uh, uh, the first place is the compiler. And this is where you don't care, uh, surprisingly. Because uh, it doesn't matter ultimately how how long it takes the compi to compile uh, to compile a query. Uh, it, if it compiles it in uh, uh, zero point uh, I don't know in like sixty milliseconds, or if it compiles it in sixty five milliseconds, it's still gonna be fine. Uh, it, or even if a GC pause is slightly longer, it only will affect one query compilation. All other queries are uh, used like a compiler pool essentially, a pool of compilers. So all of the other queries will compile will 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 continue to compile just just fine without it. Uh, so uh, in this way, for 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 the query compiler essentially, the GC pauses even if they happen, in, even if they are long, they are isolated. And then, in 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 a typical application, pretty much in any application, there is a limited amount of queries that 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 you have. And we use caching aggressively. So essentially, if your application have, uh, if your application has, I don't know, 100 queries or maybe 500 different queries, all of them will be cached within the first minute of it uh, of it running, and then you will never actually hit the, the 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 compiler, the compiling code base. Now, the second place where GC pauses can theoretically occur is the I/O layer, which is actually written not in Python; it's written in Cython. It still uses the CPython runtime. It still uses the garbage collection and everything else. But the good news here is that uh, we um, we don't have any cyclic uh, data structures uh, in the I/O process. Uh, part like one of the things that I want to do uh, for HDB 4.0 is explore the possibility of us entirely disabling garbage collection in the I/O process. It, it, it necessitates uh, us to build some basic infrastructure to make sure that. <laughs> that we can do it safely uh, uh, without uh, leaking memory or anything uh, like that. But that's essentially the goal. The goal is to entirely disable the garbage collection in the hot pass uh, of, uh, of, of, of HTTP, uh, and then it will never be an issue. And I doubt that it's an issue now, because even if garbage collector is called uh, in HDB, let's say 3.0 now, most likely it's called like for a couple of milliseconds because there is nothing to collect. We don't have cyclic data structures. Here we have a follow-up from Elixis. Their schema is loosely relational and typical queries will be to find related nodes within a certain nesting level and performing aggregation. And then they've got an example here. Um, some DBs they've tested will exponentially increase in latency as you increase the nesting level. And they want to know how, how do we fare in traversal queries? So again, this is good and, uh, and a lot of detail. I still don't have uh, all of the details, uh, but if you can strictly type your schema, essentially, if your nodes uh, can be described uh, described as, as 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 object types in our in in our in our schema, um, then this typical of traversals should happen fast, uh, as long as you strictly type this, essentially, as long as you are traversing links. Uh, if you have uh, uh, this sort of um, uh, how do you say it? Like uh, unusual, I guess, use case uh, where you implement custom IDs and custom uh, node types with some JSON data in it, and then you try to somehow mix and match this JSON data and traverse that JSON data. HDB isn't going to be super fast for you. It's going to be slow, just like any other database. But if you take advantage of our schema, if you actually uh, describe your node nodes as uh, proper schema objects, and you use our uh, uh, single and multi-links uh, to form relationships uh, between them, then uh, HDB will likely surprise you with its performance and, uh, and, uh, and DX. I think that uh, what I would do actually, uh, I, the, the answer is that it should work for you given the information that you shared. Uh, what I would do if I were you is to uh, do a quick prototype uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, write a simple benchmark script, essentially. Uh, prototype the tiny subset of your schema, generate uh, some uh, random data for it, uh, take a look at how you like HQL working with this particular schema, and uh, if there are any anomalies, if you think that anomalies are bugs, you can report them to our Discord and we can help you fix them. Uh, if you like the flavor of it, 
stick to it, use it. If you think that, hey, like HDB uh, isn't cutting it for our specific schema, uh, uh, then that's a separate conversation. Yeah, they're saying always strictly typed. But I encourage typed, some experimenting. Always strictly typed and linked by unique IDs. So it sounds like most it might, likely might be work. Shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do do the prototyping like Yuri mentioned, and if you notice any unexpected results, then report back to us, and, and we'll take a look. Or at poor it performance. Us. Yeah, yeah. We are poor performance. We are fairly quick with uh, fixing uh, reported regressions and re reported performance regressions. We uh, are totally fine to backport a lot of them uh, to the current stable version of HDB, which is HDB 3, uh, probably 3.2 now. Uh, I'm not sure if Sally uh, cut the the 3.2 release yet I, or not. Uh, I think 3.2 is live. Scott, maybe okay. if you're still here, you could take a look at the change log and just see if that's up for 3.2. Yeah, but in general, what I wanted to say is that uh, for uh, uh, for HDB uh, 2x release cycle, we released a bunch of bug fix versions. I think more than 10, uh, or even more than 15. So uh, uh, we can be very quick uh, at uh, patching things and fixing things. 3.1 is current stable, so 3.2 is probably just around the corner. All right. Do we have any news on an object spread operator for selects and an elegant way to duplicate an object? Uh, and then they've got an example of what they're what they're sort of looking for in terms of duplicating an object there. Yeah, we don't we, we don't have that yet. Uh, we don't have uh, an elegant way of doing that. Devon, this is perhaps something that you should uh, take a note of, and uh, yeah. we can. Uh, Maybe discuss in one of our Wednesday calls. Yeah, uh, I can do that. It's 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 doable. Uh, there is some design space to explore here to make it actually um, to make sure that it's actually composable. This feature uh, that it plays nice with the rest of HQL and uh, with the with the rest of the splats sort of uh, syntax. Uh, but theoretically, it's doable. Ultimately, it's a sugar. Uh, Thing. Uh, and uh, uh, HQL is open to implementing similar sugars usually. Yeah. When they fit the model. I think I've been recommending to people to, when they, it's a lot of times people wanting to change one object to another type. And so I've been recommending that they wrap their deletes in a select and then pull that data back out into the client and then do the insert based on that but that's not that's that's not exactly what you're looking for potentially uh -huh. we can create like a side library for javascript for example for the query builder mm -hmm. uh, where this can be an additional sort of uh, functionality because I, I can imagine this uh, implementable in typescript uh, given the reflection that we already perform, all the type information that we have, potentially this can be implemented in the, as, as a JavaScript library, for example, for the TypeScript uh, thing, uh, type, TypeScript language. Uh, implementing it right, right in HQL will, will certainly take some time, will not happen until 4.0. Uh, we can discuss it and see if it's uh, something that we can do. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring the implementation it here is is the implementation itself here is not the main concern for what it's worth. Uh, it's it's mostly it's it's one of those things that just require careful thinking and designing, uh, and this is where the majority of the time will be spent. Uh, just we'll to discuss let it, it. Yeah, yeah. Just to let everybody know, we've probably got time for two or maybe three more questions. We'll take those and then we'll uh, we'll let you finish out your Friday. And if you have any questions that we didn't get to, feel free to post them in the Discord and, and we'll circle back around to you. Yeah, for what it's worth, uh, we're gonna make this a uh, regular thing from now on, like every two weeks. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, feel free to join uh, any of the calls uh, whenever and feel free to basically ask whatever questions uh, or even just uh, feedback. Uh, Everything is appreciated. Yeah, most definitely. Let's see. When generating interfaces from an HDB schema, is there an existing way, or 
some opportunity if there's not to also generate richer meta domain information along with the dry type info and uh, some context they're asking because for those adding type thinking to their developer development flow um i'm not sure do you do you follow yuri um yeah i would like to 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 have some clarification here yeah uh, just let, let me read it again yeah, I'm not sure. What's, uh, uh, I, 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 need, I need some clarification. I'm not sure what type thinking is, if it's a typo or if it's a thing. Yeah, um, let's bring him up on the stage. And, uh, what kind of... If you, if you want to step on the stage, yes. Perfect. Welcome. Uh, looks like they may be having some problems. Let's take one more, and we'll keep you on the stage and see if you can uh, get your audio figured out while we're taking this other question. How feasible would it be to ship the edge db database with a desktop application or is it too heavy and and then also provide a local interface to it uh we don't have any good examples uh, but maybe it's just we are not aware of them uh doing this i think the key sort of uh complexity point here is uh how how to do the packaging right essentially uh, like if you distribute your application, how do you actually uh, embed the package of HDB itself in your in the package with it, where your application is distributed, uh, uh, or do you install it dynamically? Or so there are some 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 things that you need to sort of figure out uh, from the distribution um, uh, point of view. Um, ultimately, uh, HDB is not that heavy or resource hungry. Moreover, uh, it actually uh, tries to be um, as efficient as possible when it's run locally. So for example, if you don't use your HTTP instance, it will automatically hibernate itself uh, and will not be active. We use a thing called socket activation to do that. But that depends on your um, on your operating system. So on Linux on System D, on uh, Mac OS on Launch D, Launch CTL. Um, uh, so uh, again, there are some some basically issues to solve uh, here on uh, how exactly you want to install it to be on the host machine. It will run efficiently. It's not outrageously huge or require a lot of disk space or too much RAM. Although, I mean, it is RAM, RAM uh, hungry somewhat. It's a database, but maybe not as hungry as Slack. Uh, so, um, um, so, I mean, theoretically, it's doable. Packaging is the hardest uh, part about it. And how, how do you distribute it? How you, how you package it? Uh, I think we should probably take a look at this. Uh, but after cloud is launch. Cloud is the main thing that that we're focused on right now. This is the uh, this is the the main use case for HTTP. This is going to be the main revenue generator for the company. So it's uh, of the utter importance of for for us to have working perfect uh, proper cloud. Uh, local applications use case arises from time to time. I'm aware of it, but it's entirely unclear how to solve it properly. Uh, potentially it should be solved as like a custom build of Electron or something like that. That uh, uh, That is just, uh, hey, you just use this instead of Electron and now you can build lo local uh, web application and uh, it's already packaged and there is infrastructure and like GitHub workers and everything else to build it. Maybe it will be that. Um, maybe some from, someone from the community will solve this problem for us. Uh, I don't know. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think that we have resources to look into it uh, any time in the next few months. I want to circle back to a question I missed earlier. Curious what our thoughts are on Tiger Beetle. Tigerbeetle.com, a million transactions per second, financial accounting database. Um, they saw, the user saw a talk by the founder and he mentioned how databases change, how they worked after data loss issues due to F-Sync happened some time ago and patches decreased IO performance on databases such as Postgres. 
Is this something um, that uh, I that mean, you're uh, I looked. I looked at Tiger Beetle only cursory, and I might be wrong about it, but it seems that it basically has, basically has like a pre-baked schema. Uh, it they position it specifically as a database for like financial applications and accounting, and looks like it's not a general-purpose database just yet. It might have uh, an interesting tag uh, in in like at its core inside the engine. Um, and it might uh, generalize itself uh, given some time in, in, in the future. But like right now, it seems to be fairly early and fairly specialized for a specific, for a very specific domain. I might be wrong again because I only did the cursor look at, look at it when, when it surfaced on Hacker News a couple of days ago or whatnot. Uh, uh, but it doesn't look just yet as something, uh, as general purpose as what HTTP aims to be. As for f syncs and everything else, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I remember uh, this uh, controversy with uh, PostgreSQL that this issue was known and everybody ignored it and it was losing data and whatnot. But uh, even people uh, involved in reporting this issue, I think, admitted that Postgres is still the database of their choice. So, uh, yeah, I mean, hiccups uh, happen, uh, but... Postgres is still like one of the most stable and trusted uh, open source databases. So I'm still feeling good uh, uh, with the decision of us uh, on basing HTTP uh, on Postgres and not anything else just yet. Uh, that's basically the answer. I, I, I'm sorry, it's 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 vague, uh, 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 but yeah, we have we have deep trust in Postgres uh, and uh, it, 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 in its community. And uh, I think they're doing uh, a pretty good job at shipping and fixing things now. Here's a follow-up on the interface generation question earlier. And it sounds like what they would like to do is maybe to be able to see annotations, uh, schema yep. annotations in their IDE. Uh, so I think that's pretty much the... Hmm. So... Uh, Right, so yes, the HDB schema itself, the data model, allows you to uh, add annotations to it. And you can define uh, annotations uh, in your schema. Annotations are essentially objects. You can de de declare your custom annotation and, uh, and attach it. And annotations can be uh, arbitrary text. You can store JSON in them uh, or whatnot. And... Uh, in for, in this regard, it's uh, uh, it's it's definitely possible to sort of like sideload your schema with a bunch of meta information, which won't actually affect your schema. It's it's just meta information, and uh, uh, and and then you can uh, you can build uh, your code that uh, uh, to use reflection and get this information out of your schema dynamically in your application or write a command line tool for it if you want or anything uh, 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 or something similar. Entire, it, it's entirely up to you. We build this mechanism specifically for that, that people can uh, define their schemas, add some meta information and use this meta information maybe to generate UIs automatically or generate forms or even generate code, uh, backend code or, or whatnot. Uh, that's, that was the main motivation. Uh, but uh, HDB itself while providing while it provides this mechanism, it doesn't actually integrate it in its tooling or anything beyond the couple of standard uh, uh, annotations that it has, which is stat title and stat description. Those annotations are actually reflected in the UI of HTTP. So if you're browsing your schema in the UI, you will see those annotations there. Um, but um, we don't have any immediate plans on sort of uh, uh, using annotations uh, anywhere else. There are mechanisms that exist that is fully general purpose and you can build whatever you want with it. But integrating annotations further in the HDB tooling itself, we don't have any concrete plans for that just yet. But the good news is that because it's a general purpose mechanism and uh, there is tooling for it and nothing is hard coded in HDB, you can just get the, the your annotations in, through like a regular HQL query, you can build whatever tools you want for yourself. 
essentially. We're not, you are not limited in any way. Even including, I don't know, an extension to VS Code, if, you, if you're willing to invest that much time, nothing prevents you from uh, creating an extension to VS Code to somehow enrich your development experience uh, uh, using those annotations. That would be awesome to see. If you, if you build it, be sure to post about it in the Showcase channel. We'd love to see it. Exactly. Right. I do have a hard stop in one minute. Yep. So um, yeah, I think super happy to see you guys. Let's, let's continue the conversation in two weeks. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you for joining us, Yuri. Thanks, everybody, Thank you so for, much. for coming out. And uh, thanks, Scott, for supporting from the chat. Hope you all have a great rest of your Friday and an awesome weekend. And we'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you, guys. Thanks. See you soon.